Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to share my top 10 favourite outfits from 2019. Now I filmed a video very similar to this last year and it was one of my favourite videos to film because it gave me an opportunity to kind of look back on the year in outfits and I guess really establish and identify some common themes throughout the outfits that I really did enjoy wearing. So I'm going to start through and I'm going to try and do this in chronological order from the one that I wore first to the one that is closest to the end of the year but um, they may be mixed around just a little bit because um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure how they saved down in my downloads because I just went straight to my blog and scrolled through all the way up through to January so I'm going to be looking down at my computer I will put photos on screen now last year when I filmed this video I actually tried everything on as I was talking through each outfit but unfortunately half of this stuff is in storage and half of it more than half doesn't fit me at the moment because of the pregnancy so let's start with my first favorite outfit of 2019 and this was all centered around a black linen dress from Portman's. This dress is actually a dupe for the Isabel Morant dress, which I would love to add to my wardrobe, but I find that this one from Portman's does the trick. And I actually think silhouette might be slightly more flattering as well, but this is just such a beautiful, high quality piece. The linen feels really nice. I love the fact that it's got the wrap skirt and that it cinches in at the waist, which I find to be a really flattering detail. And that ruffled edge at the hemline is so pretty and feminine. In. The day that I wore this, this outfit, I was actually talking about um, why it's okay to repeat your outfits, which is something that I think is really important to remember that you don't have to wear something different every day. You can wear the same outfit for a week if you really wanted to, as long as it was still clean. <laughs> but I paired it with my Celine Trotter bag, which I bought close to three years ago now, I believe. I got it before we went home on a trip for Luke's birthday. And I really, really do enjoy using this bag. It is one of my favorites. It's the one that I quite often take with me traveling because it fits a good amount of stuff in it. And it's just a really classic shape. I don't think a saddlebag's ever gonna go out of style. Unfortunately, it's no longer available, but you can still find it pretty loved. And Kuyana do a really similar affordable style, which I will link in the description box below. The shoes that I wore with this outfit were my Jane Debster slides, which uh, one of my favorite sandals to wear in the summertime. They're so easy to slip on, very comfortable, and I like the fact that the tan shoes just really broke up the rest of the all black outfit. So that was my first favorite outfit of the year. Then we move into another kind of, this is another more monochromatic look, and this is gonna be a theme that you see throughout all of the outfits. The ones that I really like the most really focused around basics, and they were much more black, white, a bit of denim and some more kind of beigey tones. So this next one is an outfit that I wore, I wanna say maybe this one was in February. So I'm wearing a little camisole from Eveline and you know when it comes to prints, one of my favorite prints in my wardrobe are polka dots. I just feel like they are so classic, they're timeless, they don't date. Uh, it's not a trend laid pattern, which is one of the things that I really enjoy about it. And this cami in particular, is just one of my favorites in my wardrobe. Works really well with high-waisted styles in particular. The shorts, I bought these pre-loved from The Real Real, and they're from Philip Lim. And I'd been wanting these shorts for such a long time, and I had loaned a pair from Shopbop uh, as part of some video content that I was creating and decided, yes, I am going to invest in them, but I wanted to see if I could get them pre-loved first, which I got very lucky and I managed to get them in black as well, which is a lot more classic than the navy pair that I had loaned. I'm again wearing those Jane Debster slides, which I think, like I said before, they really helped to break up a black and white outfit while still feeling really classic and timeless. And then the bag, this is what I thought was the really interesting detail of this outfit. It's a really beautiful forest green and I love this color for bag. I just think it is so beautiful. It's got the gold hardware. This is from a French brand called LM and they do some really gorgeous bags. They're, um, they do this one, it's almost like a croissant kind of style bag, which has been really popular over the last sort of six months, I would say. I will leave that link down below as well. But I love the way that this bag looked with the outfit. I think it just it worked really nicely and it was a great way for me to incorporate a little bit of color. 
The next outfit, and this is probably hands down one of my favorite outfits of the entire year. Every single time I look at these photos, I always smile. I think in part, it was my birthday weekend and Luke and I had gone out for lunch at the Botanica in Vaucluse, which I really wanted to dine at. The food was sensational and I was just having such a good day and I think that kind of comes through in the photos. So I've gone for an all neutral outfit, I'm wearing my Madewell shirt, the courier shirt, which is one of my favourite pieces in my wardrobe. I've had it for three and a half years now and I love it, it has held up so, so well. Highly recommend, I wear it in an extra small for anyone curious. I've tucked that into my Topshop peg leg trousers, which I get so many questions about and I love these trousers, just unfortunately they're no longer available. Topshop do similar styles though, so I will link their current iteration down in the description box. Then on my feet, I'm wearing my Eveline Editor Pumps, and these are in the Camel, which have been discontinued, which I'm really, really sad about. I got these when they first launched the Editor Pumps, and I just, I really, really like the colour. I think it is really beautiful. It's more of a neutral, cool-toned Camel, which I find works really well with my colouring and also the colours that I have in my closet. The bag I paired this with was my Philip Lim Mini Pashley bag in the Mushroom, which again, this is an older colour, but they do similar styles every single season, and I just really love the way that this bag looks with cool tone neutrals, and I find it complements the outfit as opposed to competing with it. This next outfit I adore, and unfortunately I no longer have the top. I decided to declutter it, and I'm not really 100% <laughs> sure why. Uh, I think it was just one of those snap decisions I made when I was clearing out my closet uh, at the 20 week mark of my pregnancy. Um, but I'm wearing this really beautiful wrap top from Bowden which has polka dots on it again. Again like that's a print that you'll see me wearing so so much. I wore that tucked into my high-waisted Dr. Denim skinny jeans which are again a favorite item in my closet. I've had them for almost six years and I just really get a lot of joy and pleasure from wearing them because I feel like they're so flattering and they feel very comfortable on. At this time this was when I had just bought my Dior Slingback flats and I was so thrilled to have found these pre-loved. I got them for half retail which I thought was a really good price and again it's just a shoe that I have really loved having in my closet. You can get more affordable alternatives which I can link down in the description box below. The bag I paired it with was my Kuyana Half Moon uh, bag, which I have done a review on. Again, I will leave that in the description box as well if you'd like to go check it out. I've got the Croc Emboss version, and I really love the fact that this adds a bit of texture to the outfit. And I did top this off with a blazer, and the blazer is from Country Road. It's a really beautiful double-breasted style, and this is probably one of the rare occasions where I was my true size in Country Road. I find they often vanity size, but I got this jacket in eight. It may still be available and on sale, so if it is, I mean, I will try and find alternatives for anything that is older uh, and link those down below, but I really love the way that the blazer just finished off the outfit. The length that it hits me on my thigh, uh, which is just below my hip, is really, really flattering because my hips are the widest point of my body and it just really helps to balance everything out. Um, then the next outfit... This is wearing a top which I just think is so fun, it's whimsical, it is everything that I want in a classic basic piece. I like things that are classic with a twist or that are a bit unusual or interesting. And this is the top from Frame, again I bought this one pre-loved from The Real Real, and it has this sort of grid check pattern to it. Uh, you can't really see it from the photos I don't think but it is semi sheer and I'm just wearing a black bra underneath it. Uh, but this has these really cool uh, sleeve cuff details which tie with a ribbon at the wrist and then you've got these sort of floppy sleeves which I just think is such a fun little detail there. The jeans are from ASOS and these are my Farley mom jeans and honestly they look different on me depending on how much I have been working out uh, but I love the fact that these always seem to accommodate me whether I'm bloated or not. I just I love these, I love the side tabs, unfortunately this particular version of the Farley mom jean is no longer available but the stepped hem was what really had drawn me to them. Again, I'm wearing them with my Dior Slingback flats, trying to get my cost per wear down. I feel like if you're investing in something expensive, you want to make sure you're wearing it over and over again. I definitely do not save my items for best or for special occasions. I think they should be worn and loved. 
And then the bag I paired it with is from One Purse. So I don't have this bag anymore, but it is so gorgeous. I got a very similar one from Celine, which is why um, I decided to part ways with the One Purse one. But the quality of it is divine. It's a really lovely pebbled leather and it has fabric interior. You can get it embossed with your initials. Um, just a really stunning bag, really. But yeah, the thing about this outfit that I love the most is that top. It is just gorgeous. My next favourite outfit is a head to toe neutral look and I feel like this is at the time that I was really starting to experiment with wearing all neutrals especially during the colder months and not reaching so much for all dark colours and that's why I really love this outfit. I mean some of the pieces in this outfit, well two of them aren't perfect but all together I really love the way that it looks and it's all sort of a single tone broken up by the black handbag. So the sweater was a very lucky find via eBay. It was a Celine sweater which I managed to snag for a ridiculous price. I actually think the seller might have forgotten a zero <laughs> on the price. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a wool sweater. I do find it slightly itchy which is kind of my only complaint and it is it is quite cropped and it has very voluminous sleeves so it really only works with things that are very high waisted and that's why I say it's not perfect but I really love the item and I just think it is absolutely gorgeous that sweater and I'm looking forward to wearing it in the autumn winter season to come. I wore that tucked into my Levi's skinny jeans and these are the mile high skinny crop and surprisingly these were my second most worn pair of jeans in my wardrobe over 2019 which I when I saw that I got a bit of a shock because I've mentioned so many times how I would not recommend these jeans they don't really have stretch they kind of knee a lot uh, I find them really short but the length is actually very flattering on me considering I do have a very short inseam um, <laughs> But yeah, I just find they're not perfect. They're not my perfect white skinny jean, but I did reach for them a lot because they were what I had in my wardrobe and I wanted to make the most of them. And that's definitely something that you may notice with some items in my wardrobe. They may not be perfect, but they're what I have and so I'm going to make the most of them while I've got them in my closet. The coat is one of my favourite additions to my wardrobe in 2019. It was gifted to me very kindly from W Concept and it's from a brand called Kinder Salmon. And this coat just looks so luxurious. It is so elegant. It elevates any of my outfits that I pair it with. It was one of my most worn items that I reach for, especially in the winter month. But the color is just divine. It's sort of a very uh, creamy oat color on the exterior. And then the interior has more of a mushroom shade. So with the folded over lapel, you kind of get that contrast, which I adore. And you can see it again on the belt. I just think it's really beautiful. The patch pocket details are lovely as well. The shoes that I'm wearing with this are from Frankie Four, and I love these. They are so gosh darn comfortable. They are like walking on clouds. I've got them in kind of a grey putty colour I think it's called. Then to break up all of those neutrals I went for a black bag and again here I added in a bit of texture because the bag has a croc uh, effect to the leather and that's from Oritin. That's just really Gorgeous bag, one that I am still continuing to use and love. Okay, just four more outfits to go. The next outfit is a head-to-toe black look. And I love wearing head-to-toe black. I think it is just very chic, timeless, understated, easy as well. Monochromatic dressing in general is just a really great way to head out the door and look chic without seeming like you have put in any effort and actually it's probably the most effortless way that I get dressed. So the shirt that I'm wearing is from Evelyn and this is one of their linen shirts and again this is probably one of my favorite pieces that I've added to my wardrobe from the brand. I think it is very effortless, easy to wear, uh, great across all seasons because you can layer it in the winter time. Um, here in Sydney our winters are very mild but uh, it was something that I was wearing around autumn winter time and I just really really love the way that it fits it's quite kind of boxy through the body but it does have a longer length so you can wear it loose or you can wear it tucked in i think it would actually make a really great beach cover up too if you went a few sizes up and then you could wear it one open over your swimsuit now i have tucked that into my realization part black skinny jeans these are really comfortable they are so stretchy but i do think that the sizing is a little bit off now, I personally would have preferred if the jeans came up a little bit higher on my waist because I do love a super high rise. Uh, I really like them. I actually got them taken in at the ankle and taken up as well because they were so long when I got them. I short leg problems. <laughs> 
but yeah I, I just find them really comfortable very easy to throw on and it's like wearing leggings I did belt these at the waist with my Isabel Morant zap belt and this to me is a really great way to uh, break up an all black outfit and just kind of give a little bit more shape to the silhouette especially when I am wearing something a bit more billowy on top my shoes are one of my favorite pairs of shoes in my wardrobe. They are my Charlotte Olympia Kitty Flats. This is actually the second pair of these shoes that I have because Luke, uh, he repurchased them for me a couple of Christmases ago because my old ones were so worn out. But I just get so much joy from wearing them because they're so whimsical and fun and they just add a playful element to my outfits. Then my bag is my Kuyana leather tote bag which is such a brilliant tote and I think if you are looking for just an oversized tote bag, one that doesn't have a closure, this is a really good way to go. I did a tote bag review, um, review kind of comparing three different totes a while ago and I'm going to link that up here if you'd like to go and have a watch and this was the one that came out on top. I just think it's brilliant. Then we've got my next outfit, which I love this, even though I don't have the coat anymore. I just thought such a great outfit combination. I love the colors and I think that's sort of what really drew me into this outfit. It's neutral, but then there's that white and the black, which are, you know, core elements of my wardrobe. So the sweater that I'm wearing is from Marks and Spencer and it is a cotton fisherman knit sweater. I have to say this is probably one of the best purchases that I made all year. I got the navy one as part of a campaign that I did with them and then I decided to purchase the white one myself because I loved it so much and it was around the $25 mark on sale so I feel like it retailed for under $40 full price which is just an unbelievable price for a really beautiful cotton sweater that is quite heavy as well. I tucked that into my Everlane patch pocket skirt which was gifted to me. This I got as part of my work that I do with them on an ongoing basis and I really like this skirt. I feel like it's a great all year round piece especially in the black. I wear it in a size zero uh, and I find that it looks really good when it is belted in particular. On my feet are my Vanelli two-tone pumps and you will know how much love I have for these shoes. I have them in two colours and they are just one of my most worn pieces throughout the entire year because they really elevate an outfit and I like the fact that they have an almond shaped toe. The coat is from The Curated. I do have another coat from Mute by JL which I preferred over this one. I just found that it was a little bit more flattering because it wasn't so oversized on me. And I guess it really all comes down to the look that you're going for. But with this particular outfit it really worked. Having the longer silhouette of the coat I think really balanced out the uh, silhouette that I had underneath. Then the bag, again, adding in texture with that mock croc. You'll see this bag pops up quite a bit. I love this little frame icon clutch from uh, Oriton. It doesn't fit a lot in it, only the essentials, but it's just such a beautiful bag. It looks very vintage, but it's modern at the same time. Now, I love this next outfit. Again, it's sort of another head-to-toe black look, but I just think it is very chic, understated. Uh, it, it's just a really easy throw on outfit that looks very pulled together and I think it's all in the details really on the fact that I'm wearing some low pumps. Uh, so I wore this towards the end, it would have been around the start of spring I would say. And I have got my Mountain Bow cashmere sweater which uh, the white one was one of my most worn items of 2019. The black one I've got in a small which fits a lot smaller than my white one uh, and it's just a really good piece to have especially during the colder months. Uh, it's not the softest cashmere though. Uh, if you want super soft cashmere, Nardum is great. They've got a $75 cashmere but their sleeves are really long because it is a unisex style so I would recommend it more for tall girls over short or petite girls so do keep that in mind. I have done a cashmere sweater review for Nardum which I will also link down in the description box if you'd like to go check that out. The jeans are from Mother Denim and I remember when I got these I said I was so disappointed in them but I didn't want to go through the hassle of returning them because Shopbop returns I think it costs around 30 US dollars so it's a little bit of a hit to the budget when you have to send things back. I like that they've got an easy returns process but it's just quite cost prohibitive. So I decided to just hang on to them and actually they are one of the most comfortable pairs of jeans that I own. So I was pregnant when I took these photos and probably also bloated or starting to kind of fill out my jeans a little bit too much and these were one of the ones that still fit me. 
because they have so much elasticity to them. So I actually really like them and I like the color. I love the frayed edged hem as well. It's sort of, uh, it's asymmetrical, which is really fun detail. I haven't really seen this on any other jeans. Uh, it's not quite a stepped hem. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's just, it's different. And I think that's part of what makes the jean as well as the very inky color of the dye that's being used. Um, I did add a belt to this outfit just to help break up my upper and lower half because I was wearing all the same color. And this belt is from Witchery and it has a mock croc effect to it. Unfortunately, the style is old, but there are so many other ones similar. The bag, again, I actually kind of matched it to the belt, uh, is from Kuyana. It's that half moon bag, which I love. Again, it just adds texture. It's really divine, as you can see. I have a little bit of an obsession with mock croc at the moment. It's probably my favorite when it comes to bags, and those are the bags that I've been wearing the most of late. My coat is from Grana, and I'm wearing this in a medium. It's a very lightweight coat, so one that is more suited to the start of autumn and colder climates. Here in Sydney, it's one that I could wear. Most of the time, I probably wouldn't wear it on the super cold days in winter, even though they aren't that cold, but uh, it's been a good throw on piece for me and I really like the length of it because it hits me just below my widest point. Finally, my shoes are the Editor Pumps from Everlane and these are in the navy suede, which I think is just really elegant and such a rich color. And I like the fact that it almost looks like it blends in with the outfit because you can't quite tell that they're navy because it's such a dark navy. Uh, it's just a really um, beautiful way to finish off the look. I actually realized I've got an 11th outfit that is my favorite, which I completely forgot about. So I'm going to share <laughs> 11. Uh, the next look was one that I wore, I want to say I must have been around 18 or 19 weeks pregnant of memory serves when I took these photos. I shared them after the 20 week mark. I'm wearing my favorite Joseph roll neck sweater. Now, if you watch one of my proof, if you watch my Black Friday video, which I'll leave linked up here, then you will have seen me mention that I took the sweater to the dry cleaners and they shrunk it, which this is, it shrunk in on me, so it was a lot larger and it actually came up a lot um, short, more cropped, uh, which you can't tell from these photos, but um, I ended up being able to fix it. So I soaked it for 25 minutes with fabric softener in warm water. And remember this is 100% wool, so if you were trying to do this with something that is cashmere or something else, I would recommend doing research first. But for 100% wool piece, this worked. Uh, I left it for 25 minutes. Um, I made sure the water was kind of tepid, it wasn't too warm. Then after that, I squeezed out as much of the water as I could. I didn't rinse it. And then I got a towel. I did my, if you've seen my clothing care video, again, I will leave that linked up here or down in the description box. I do show you the technique that I use to get water out of my knitted pieces before I leave them to dry. So I wrapped it up in the towel and then I kind of stand on it and I put my pressure on without um, stamping on it too much to kind of distress the fibers. And then I gently stretched it out and then I left it outside to dry and now it is it's perfect it's probably a little bit long in the arms now but uh, other than that I am so thrilled that I was able to um, come up with a solution and fix it so for anyone wondering my Joseph sweater is a-okay <laughs> I put that into my realization past skirt and this skirt I said this before I'm so on the fence about it I love the way that it looks. I love the pattern. I love the little flippy detail at the hemline. I just think it's really beautiful. But I think for the price, it the quality isn't there for the price. And I don't love how it puckers at the waist. This was pre-baby bump and also post-baby bump. It's got much worse. But um, I don't love that detail. I think when you're paying over $200 for something, it should be um, designed in a way that fits a lot better. So beautiful skirt but if you're on a budget maybe you might like to get an affordable alternative instead um, but if it's something you're going to wear loads then go for it the shoes are my by far mules which i'm so happy that i decided to buy um, these i got in the new patent and i will say if you are planning on getting them i would recommend going for the leather pair over the patent the patent ones i do find rub a little bit because they're patent so naturally they aren't going to be uh, as forgiving as as a general, you know, your typical leather would. So, um, yeah, I love the way that they look. Being nude, they go with absolutely everything. The squared off toe is gorgeous. And I love the uh, block heel design, which is very geometric.
Um, then the bag is my Philip Lim Mini Pashley, as I've mentioned before. I really love the way that this pairs with those more cool toned outfits. I think it looks really nice. Um, and then the last outfit that I wanted to talk about is actually one that I wore when we went to Salt um, at Shoal Bay for our baby moon. Uh, so we booked that because I've been wanting to go and stay there for such a long time but it is so expensive. And when they first opened I think they just had Salt 1 and 2 which is the big house that sits on the corner right across the road from the beach. Then Salt 3 which is the cottage opened and I want to say it's it's around half the price of booking Salt 1 or 2 and it's also much more suitable for a couple um, or two couples uh, and so we decided to book that because it was much less of a hit to the wallet um, and just as beautiful and honestly it is idyllic as the pictures um, and this outfit I wore while I was there it was my mal white tiered dress and I really love this dress I think it is so beautiful for pregnancy but also going to be one that I can wear continuously after the baby is born as well which I'm just really looking forward to being able to have those memories of being pregnant while wearing that dress but also continue to wear it afterwards um, and it's a really nice cotton it's got a really beautiful design to it hopefully I can find it and I'll link it down below otherwise something similar I wore it with my Saint Laurent New Pieds sandals which I am so thrilled that I managed to pick up I got them half price during the Black Friday sales and yeah, they are a kind of a milky latte colour and they are patent so I have had a little bit of rubbing now and then. I did size up to a European 41 so if my feet grow at all through the pregnancy it means that I have a little bit of leeway there because I do have space at the heel but they are just very classic elegant shoes. Then the bag that I wore with this outfit was my JW Anderson logo bag. And this is a great bag that I love because it is quite compact, it is very structured, it has that very cool logo on it which I don't think is too garish or out there, um, it just kind of almost looks like it's the clasp. And then you can have a gold strap, um, it's a chain strap which you can wear on your shoulder. I do find it can dig in a little bit and feel quite heavy uh, but there's also just a little um, what do you call it, leather strap that you can uh, wear at top handle or kind of sling it over your arm. So that was my last favourite outfit of 2019. I hope you enjoyed this video. So yeah, I feel like the kind of main takeaways for me is that I really love items or I, I love the outfits the most that are very basic silhouettes, things that are timeless, they aren't um, groundbreaking at all, but they just look very chic, put together, understated. They are just very easy go-to looks and they're the ones I enjoy wearing the most. So kind of when I think about my wardrobe moving forward, at this point I've got really no idea how my body might change after the baby is born so I'm really keeping an open mind but for me this has been really useful because it allows me to see where my money would be best spent when it comes to investing in anything new, my wardrobe. So that is it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd love to know um, which of these 11 outfits was your favourite. Do let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again very soon with a brand new video. Bye!